shop yeah. mill. Tell me about your, tell me about your Mimi. Well, she's really nice and she's like, like Pa. He's nice too, but Mimi's even nicer. She's brave because she can hunt animals that are hard to hunt and everything. She knows how to shoot long range and she just knows how to make everything just a good time. What are the three words to describe Melanie? One tough mother. How's that? Does that sound good? <laughs> One conversation spent with Melanie Pepper, and the sight picture is crystal clear. This woman was born to hunt. But Melanie didn't grow up behind the trigger. Far from it. This huntress took her first shot at the age of 40. I had a lease in southeast Texas when Melanie and I first met. Melanie went over there with me one fall. On a, on a hunt, mainly just to ride the three-wheelers. She enjoyed it so much that uh, she wanted to go back again, but hunt the next time. She was a pretty good shot, so we put her in a deer stand. She shot a little spiked deer, and she was just very, very excited. I grew up in San Antonio. My father and brother hunted. Because of that experience, I just found as I got older and, and met John that I just, that was in my blood and part of who I was, but never knew it. Like so many after their first hunt, Melanie was hooked, but she had no idea then that hunting would become such a force in her life. She's seen trophies from Alaska to Zambia, and now she's seeing them from the stage. But if you ask her, recognition means nothing without the experience, the pursuit, the rush, the hunt. When I'm hunting, I am very focused on the animal. I never celebrate after I pulled the trigger before I know that the animal is down. I never hear the bullet. It is just pure focus on that animal. I mean, she hunts and she hunts hard and she'll get, uh, she, I mean, she'll get down and dirty. She'll get hot and sweaty. She'll get out of breath. I mean, she'll work hard. It's interesting always being the only woman in a camp. I feel once I arrive that everybody's waiting for me to prove myself. The men are always rooting for you. You still have to show them that you're in there, you're gonna hang in there and try and do your best. When they see how hard Melanie works, when they see her actually crank in her elevation, watch her use her mill dots on her scope for her windage correction, they go, wow, some of them aren't even that familiar with the kind of ballistics that she's dealing with. Oh, she's great to hunt with because she, she's focused. Uh, she, she pays attention. Uh, she's a better shot than I am, so that's, that's always fun to watch. But Melanie is no day at the lodge spa wife and certainly no tag-along companion. She's battled the elements, endured physical injuries, all the while determined to come out on top. You know, when you're sheep hunting, it's really difficult. The terrain, the rocks, the shell, the wind, the altitude. And the altitude where I shot my Marco Polo sheep in Tajikistan was 14,400 feet. And it was very difficult. But once you get up there, the wind doesn't matter. The terrain doesn't matter. But at the end of the day, it's metal. Are you ready to train? Are you ready to study? You can be lucky for a while, but eventually your ability shines through. We were going to Alaska, and we're 45 miles south of the Arctic Ocean, and we walk up about 14 miles and set up a spike camp. We were climbing those mountains. We were tired. We'd been up for a long time. It was cold. It was wet. That last million meter shot at 534 yards, I'm the one that ranged it. I guess I should remember. And uh, it was a beautiful shot, but it was right at the- 540. No, it was 534. 540. <laughs> OK. So she, uh, whatever she says. So we started heading back down, and unfortunately, I caught my foot underneath a boulder. So it took five days for us to get a super cub to come up and get us. I had broke both bones and tore the ligament of my tibia away from the bone. So they leave me in camp, and I had them put the carcass of my caribou down by the stream we were camped next to. So I had my gun, and I was just hoping that my barren ground grizzly would come out when they weren't there so I could shoot it. When she broke her leg and sent them off looking for John's sheep while she laid there with hers hung up, hoping the grizzly would come up by herself. 
I mean, that's not only perseverance, that's courage. But I'll tell you that no matter what, that will be one of my favorite trophies of all time. And it reminds me of what you can endure and how you can persevere if you put your mind to it. Hunting with my husband has been such a wonderful experience. It really creates a bond because you get surprises every time you go on a hunt. He is always there to give me a hand up a really steep mountain uh, or to push me, one of the two. Our first hunt was very special to John and I because not only were we going to Africa for the first time, but we were also going to get married there. And so the day before we were married, John had shot a zebra. And that evening, we went leopard hunting and uh, were up all night, finally got back to the camp in time to just change clothes, or I just changed clothes, put on some more makeup. We didn't have time to take a shower. And then our ceremony started. And uh, it was really a special, special occasion. And uh, out there on the Limpopo River, in northern South Africa, we got married. We were able to look up during the ceremony and after and see the Southern Cross. And we just went, wow. You know, never in a million years did I think I'd be in Africa, much less see the Southern Cross. It's no secret that Melanie and John were meant to hunt together. They'll attest to that energy that's shared between two people on a hunt. It's an intimate bond that's strengthened when you're working together. It's a bond they enjoy sharing most with their grandkids. We have told our four grandchildren that when they are nine, we will take them anywhere in the world they want to go and do what they want to do. When you're out hunting with them, there's really a lot of one-on-one -on -one time. And so you find out things about them that you didn't know, what their interests are, how they're doing in school, really and what their fears are, their concerns about growing up. And uh, it's, it's remarkable. The excitement they have is the same excitement that Melanie shows. Uh, they, just, they just beam, it gives them self-confidence. So where did their granddaughter Chloe pick as her destination? Panama. This is one passionate fisherwoman, just like her shirt says. Live, love, fish. Pink Marlin. This is when I got my Marlin Award catching the first black marlin of the season, which was a big deal there. And when I got my award, everyone was like clapping and screaming. I felt famous. I don't know, I like, like going on trips with them because you're by yourself. There's no one, like no brothers or anything. And it's like all about you. If every time that you, like let's say, catch a fish, they're really happy for you. Chloe just astounded us because of her drive and she never gives up. And then there's eight-year-old Tristan. Where's he off to next? Pa and Mimi are taking him to Zambia. If he keeps his grades up, of course. Tristan's done just, just fabulous. We took him this year and he shot three animals this year and uh, all three of them, he was, he, was, uh, he was very cautious and very safe. I just like it because like, we go on hunts and everybody else, like grandma takes them to like Disneyland or something. He has shot many animals. His last one was a black buck. And so uh, he was able to have his face painted and just loved it. With the black buck, we had to go into the blind and, and it took for like an hour. And I was sitting in Mimi's lap. And Mimi said that I had to go, I could only go to the bathroom after I shot the black buck, so. I really wanted to shoot it. I'll tell you what, we just enjoy it. When we have those kids, they have been absolutely perfect on these trips. They're very independent too. It's fun to watch it, it's to see how independent they get as the trip progresses. Hi, my name is Max and Pepper. My birthday. Melanie and John Beam talking about their oldest grandson, Max, who they say left for Africa a little boy and came back a man. It was an amazing experience for him. And I'll never forget, John and I were down at the side of the mountain, and we could see Max following the professional hunter up the mountain, and they were beautifully silhouetted against the sky. And here you have this tall young man followed by this short kid trying to take two steps for every step the PH took. 
and uh, then be successful when he got there. He's been very fortunate, young man, to have gone to Africa and so forth. There is a change in him. Um, there's a maturity that there wasn't prior to the trip. Um, it's pretty humbling. Hunting has made me more confident. It makes me tougher mentally and physically. It's just a really neat experience to know that I've been to a totally different place that has a totally different culture. It just kind of makes me feel unique. Well, when I see him go down, I get a rush of adrenaline and just get so excited. It's, it's a really good feeling. I was really excited to see my grandparents come up the hill because I knew that they'd be really proud of me, and so I was really happy. Maybe the only thing stronger than Melanie's passion for the sport is her passion for passing it on. I'm president-elect for Houston Safari Club next year. And because of what I've seen with our grandchildren and even our godchildren who we take hunting, it is so important for their self-esteem and their self-confidence that I really want to start targeting educational programs for children. The NRA, SCI, Houston Safari Club, Dallas Safari Club do an excellent job with that. And I think if we do pull resources together, uh, we can make it work. You know, children are the future of our, of our business. It's the exposure to the camaraderie and the tradition and the love of the outdoors and the respect of Mother Nature that goes along with it that teaches people to be more responsible. I think about seven years ago, I was involved with Operation Orphans. And I was asked if I could get some women together and come down and take young girls, 12 through 17, out hunting for the first time. And most of these children had come from very difficult lives. My student shot a spike, and the animal ran about 50 yards away. And she was besides herself. It was wonderful, and that's what got me thinking about you know, hunting is full of self-confidence for these kids. And she said, I cannot wait to get back to my foster home and tell my brother what I have done. I can't ask for anything better than that for these kids. There's no better time for women in the shooting sports. And there's no bigger voice for them than women in the NRA, particularly in the Women's Leadership Forum. Women really have an incredible role right now in the NRA. When I see women get together in WLF, there's always the focus of how I can get more women in line. How can I do this in my own community? And that's where it starts. The NRA's Whittington Center is really one of the best kept secrets in the NRA. They are excited, they're enthusiastic, they're there for us. And that's, you know, if you get the woman, you get the family. To see 350 women in a room and they all believe in carrying guns is quite unique. We're all like-minded and we want the best for our country and our children and we're ready to go out there and fight. As co-chair of Women's Leadership Forum's luncheon along with Gay Kelsey, I hope every woman takes away from our luncheon the word enthusiasm. I hope they feel it. I hope they see it out there with any woman that they run into because it is so important to get other like-minded women to join the Women's Leadership Forum, to join the NRA first of all. And that is really the only way that we're going to be able to increase our base. And we have got to increase our base. It is just so important. Melanie's a strong woman with plans to tackle some mountainous goals. And she says her inspiration comes from two very personal role models, her sister and her mother. My sister recently passed away and she never went to bed without her gun by her side, as long as I can remember. So she really was a role model for me. She had her gun before I did and she was my little sister. To women that believe they're too old to hunt, my mother was 87 years old when she shot her first sheep, her first trophy. And I have never seen my mother so happy. She has told me year after year after year, that was the best time of my life. Amidst humble beginnings that quickly grew to an undying passion, Melanie has just become the 19th woman to ever win the prestigious Safari Club International Diana Award. And her family and friends say there's no one more deserving. 
Here's someone that never held a gun until she was 40 years old. She's only been internationally big game hunting in 15 years, and she's already received one of the most prestigious awards you can get. Diana Award. I know that it is about the Roman goddess, Diana, the goddess of hunting. It's just a really big honor just, just for me to know that my grandma is getting an award that big. Melanie is, she sets very high goals for herself and she tries very hard to reach them and I have not seen her fail at anything. She is a fine woman hunter and she doesn't only hunt, she gives back to it and that's part of the Diana Award as well. You need to be really involved in conservation and furthering hunting and encouraging other women hunters and it's a big part of what we do. Well, I'm so proud of her, you know, and I'm so happy for her and she deserves to be there. But Melanie's determination is one of the reasons why she's so successful at this and why she's winning this award. Women and their children are hunting more and more every day. And every day, as Melanie attests to, there's less of an excuse to put it off as a coulda, woulda, shoulda. The camaraderie, the struggle, the joy. No other experience embodies the purest form of personal discovery. And for women, there's no better time to set your sights on the game. Because I think the future of the shooting sports depends on women and kids. And that's one of the great things I think the NRA has recognized and aggressively pursuing. You know, I would always say but there's no excuse for, for starting late. If you don't start, that's just an excuse. Go, go enjoy it. You know, I think most women who don't have a desire to hunt and they take that first animal, they're hooked. I know very few women who have taken an animal and said, I don't want to return. And I will tell you that I don't know any professional hunters who haven't said that they'd rather hunt with women because we listen. I love it.